Hi, I'm David Dutton, and welcome to Kill Phil. <laughs> Stop! What are you doing? Oh. So there's some speculation whether we killed Phil or not last week. Oh, we killed him, and. Okay, we'll be back next week, and we're doing another video game weapon, uh, this time from Dead Space. Alright, so now let's go back to Rick's place and see that full build of a gravity gun. Oh, and he dressed me. I, I don't really dress like that. That's his stuff. So Rick, let's talk about the gravity gun. Yeah, look, gravity gun. So how do you start a build like that? It's so complex, there's little gizmos and pulleys in it. Inside out, man. Usually what I'll do is uh, engineer the mechanics, sort of like the guts, the skeleton framework to get that working first, get that out of the way. This. I think would work as our containment vessel, and uh, we need a drive system, so I got a few of these lazy Susans. This is very dangerous. I mean, with this kind of power, I mean, I could, I could level half a Burbank. These are locking uh, magnetic inducers, which will be mounted on the outside of this rig, which will keep the plasma inside. This is a magnesium shell, perforated, uh, almost like a microwave. You know, like the screen on your microwave, so that it, it won't uh, get out and uh, hurt the, the cat or the dog. Devcon Plastic Walter is the best overall epoxy that you can buy. Hey, it beats the hell out of flipping burgers, right? <laughs> Behaving yourself, chicken? That's the first thing that's gonna be levitated. It's a beautiful day here in Burbank, manipulating gravity. It's a crazy thing! It's crazy! We're ready to assemble the core. There's 20 different ways to do something, but uh, based on the time factor on this, I'm trying to keep things as standard as possible. This is the pinchers. The pinches. You'll find a better way to do something, you'll improve upon old techniques, or, or come up with something completely new. Right now, everything is based on, on what is here. These are the pinches that will focus the gravitational field. Finger joints will be reinforced with a resistance in the joint, on the back of the joint, and then a cable that runs through the front half and uh, runs through the center into a cable pole, which everything will be gathered. So when you pull the, the grip, it'll do this. You got our rubber bands now. There's a uh, track on here. It's always better to have a more solid track, but this will work in a pinch. I modified this screw tip. This is our driver system. Okay, it's slipping. We might have to go around it twice. We may have to go with a harder drive belt, something that's not so stretchy. Yeah, the rubber band is, is giving too much. Let's try another one. The rubber band bands didn't work very well. I think just stretched a little bit too much. I mean, you need more of a direct drive. Nope. So did you use parts from the workshop or did you go out and have to find anything for this? It was, it was a composite. Some parts were from here, uh, some of the metals and, uh, and and short pieces. But mostly it's like little nerds and tchotchkes that, we've, that I have just hanging around here. I'm making a belt out of stuff that you put on the side of your truck to keep you from slipping in the rain. Normally I would uh, I would go go to the store and grab exactly what I need, but I'm kind of improv here. It's a little bit of R&D, it's a little bit of mad scientist. The key is get the job done in time allotted with the budget allotted. Sometimes you gotta work with what you got. Yesterday, we had some problems with the drive system. So I modified the drive system to be like a tire on a road and uh, welded this framework into it so that we can drop this in. This little adjustment here will keep it pressed down onto the drive. Little Jimmy Johnson from Houston, Illinois asks, how do you make the joints? There's a lot of testing and effects. This was one of the experimental, uh, I was trying to get this to work, but I went with something simpler with this. We're gonna build one of these. So basically here's our parts, they're all measured out and everything. We're gonna chop this up. So I gotta take this one, this is the electrode. This is a lot of fun, I love doing this. 
I don't like to wear gloves. I, I like to feel the steel. Sometimes it's better to know if something's getting too hot or too cold if you're dealing with plastics and it's touching something. So if it's too hot for your hand, it's generally too hot for plastic. I'm going down about an inch. So there you go, it's like a bullet tip. Then we just cut that off there. So anyways, we got our parts drilled and how we assemble these is uh, with pop rivets. Let's slip it in the hole here and that'll give us our hinge. Time for some little fiddly bits. Uh, Pre-prepping these with springs. We're gonna pre-mount those. There's something about metal! What I need to do is find out how far down they wanna go before the spring will not carry them anymore. Right about there. There's tack welding here. So I'll put a little stop on it. I just wanted to go from here to here. I think I'm gonna need a bigger spring, definitely. And I kind of strategically welded in these little eyelets here for the cable to go through. And then that's gonna come back. We got some decent springs now, we're gonna try it again. Eventually this is gonna get tied into this handle, which that will control this. Fun with gels. We've got all kinds of fun gels here to simulate plasma or fire. So the gels are clear, the light will pass, as you can see. They can be mixed and matched to create different colors. This is like a white, so you can see. And this I thought was really cool because this is basically like a moray kind of an effect. Whenever you cross a pattern with another pattern, you get that moray effect I was talking about. When your moon hits your eye, that's a moray. Getting towards the end of the build, I've been up all night working on this. All the guts are in it, it's ready to go, and I, I rigged up a light in it. And you can see the lights on the inside. Battery pack was underneath. I think it's uh, eight 1.5 AA cells, which equals 12 volts. So anyways, the wire comes from the battery to, to an intermittent switch, which runs up here into the inside to a 12 volt. It's probably a brake light or something inside. So you get your intermittent light there. And I can even put gels, some little gels on the inside and kind of mix it up so that it, it looks like it's uh, swirling around in there. Really detailing it is just bringing it up from that with surface details, with color, with paint, with different textures. Now it's time to start making it look like what it's supposed to look like. This is casting urethane. So I'll form fit this by a jigsaw, bandsaw, and then sculpt it. I'm gonna do a poor man's lathe. It's foam, it's dense foam. I'll spin it on the drill press and we'll sculpt it into a shape, something that'll do some damage. Uh, this is a sheer form, this for knocking stuff down. And I kind of take the chatter bumps out of it. And this is where sculpting comes in. So I wanna, I wanna put a taper, like an angle. I just use my finger. You just go like this, so I don't want to take this much off it. What you kind of do is you kind of just start sculpting. And you check your lines. Stay within the lines. See, so that'll give us a really cool kind of paper on there. It's good to have little mistakes in sometimes because the little mistakes are what's what makes it realistic. If it's too perfect, it can be computerized. Like inside here, there's little bits of uh, flaws and glue sticking out. You know, it's okay to leave that in there because you can dress it out and it, it looks like a weld. So again, I'm ready to prep for paint. What I want to do is mask off the areas that I don't want to get primer on. My razor blade. I'm just trying to block out some of these areas. All right, so I'm gonna attach this. Right now I've got Gorilla Glue. This stuff is nice because it expands. So in order to hold this in position, I whipped up these little pegs. This foam is pretty hard too. So we're gonna get ready to turn these. Watch this. I'm gonna put some cool little interesting fiddly bits in here. Maybe a detail at the top. I'm gonna form it down into a 
slope down the inside. And then the polish you just kind of And with caulking, little tiny caulking, and make little beads so it looks like it's been welded together. It was all steel, aluminum, wood. Yeah, very. it is very kind of steampunky. Oh, even the colors, that's what kind of gave it a steampunk feel. Uh, it's coppery and it's bronzy and it's kind of uh, gold in color, which because that's what it is in the game, but it was a... Uh, uh, with those colors, um, it gave it kind of a steampunk kind of feel, which was yeah. cool by me. I mean, I was just like, okay, that's cool, it looks that way. So I said, let's just do it that way. So it looks like burn marks, like it's, like the end gets hot. Just wanna kind of rough it up. The gravity gun's a really popular video game weapon, and yeah, yeah it has the pinchers, Pinch it has the lights, it revolves, and it picks things up when yeah. it when it pinches down like that. Yeah. But the, the gun isn't dead on like the game, Gun. It, no, it, it's definitely there. It has yeah. the same mechanics. Yeah. It functions the same way. Yeah. But uh, what liberties did you take to make your build? No, I took quite a bit of liberties with it because uh, I mean there are pictures and there was different versions floating around that that I had seen. What mine was was kind of like a composite mm -hmm. of the different versions that I've seen. Well, one of my prime goals was is to make it like physically interesting by having uh, cool little movie things and cables and and lights and. And, and having that be the interest and be able to then dress it with the elements. All right, so we're here day three. And day it's three. looking like, I'm pretty sure this is not like a dog. This is the gravity gun. Uh, yeah, this is it. It costed me a relationship, a parrot and an engine in order to get to this point. But uh, Sounds here we about are. about right. Here we are. So uh, if you're ready to take a look at her, we'll. I'm stoked. <laughs> So did you sleep at all during these three days? <laughs> sleep? What sleep? Yeah. <laughs> sleep is for the week. Okay, so let's say I am an average cosplayer and I want to make this. Could I possibly do this being like an yeah, average sure. welder? Uh, yeah, an average welder. Even if you don't know how to weld, you can still make it out of particle board, wood, and yeah, a basic gamer could, you know, with some, some construction skills could build something like this. So there's hope for us who are less <laughs> skilled. So can you tell me a little bit about how the lights are working? Yeah, it's got a 12 volt battery pack, buttons underneath here, and then drive system where you drive with your thumb. So, I get your pen here. We see it with a little bit of mood lighting. It worked great. It looked great. Till next time. Slow motion. <laughs> All right. See you later. <laughs> All, right. All right. Cut. So remember, next week we're doing Dead Space, and we're going back to Prop Master Dragon's workshop. So remember to subscribe so you know when the next video comes up, and we'll see you next week. Get your film fix. Subscribe to Cinefix.